Hey there friends, it's Kate and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Golden State Educate. I am a fifth year, second grade teacher here in Northern California and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about my math centers. So if you're wondering why you should do math centers, I think the biggest reason that I wanted to do them is because I wanted to engage my students. I wanted to have a way for them to review the concepts that we'd covered already. And I wanted them to talk in partners. I wanted them to collaborate. I wanted them to practice being mathematicians and showing their work. And I wanted them to have a math station that wasn't dependent upon me and wasn't dependent upon a computer. I already have an independent station where they do a worksheet. I already have a technology station and I already have a center when they're with me. But that fourth station was something that I wasn't exactly sure what to do with them. As a kid, I had never liked math and I was never engaged during math time because I thought it was really hard. And then as a teacher, I felt so confused about how to make math digestible and simple and engaging for my students. And two years ago, I decided that my summer project was going to be figuring out what I was going to do for math centers. So I watched so many vlogs, I read so many blogs, I followed so many people on Instagram to see what they were doing. And I finally figured out a system that works for me. So as I talk you through these centers, I will have them linked down below where they came from. I have some centers from Happy Hearts and First. I absolutely loved her blog when I found it. Everything that she had explained for her first graders, I felt would really work for me and my second graders. I really liked how all of her centers were the same every week and it was just the skill that changed. So I'm not having to teach different games over and over and over again. As I'm teaching the skills, the games kind of are the same. So that was really nice. I loved that. And then I already had some centers from Lucky Little Learners. So I wanted to still use those because I had already printed and cut and laminated some of those and found that they were successful as well. So I wanted to find a way to incorporate both of those. And then I also wanted to have a math center that was not as much prep for me because the other two were. So I figured color by code would be really nice because the kids get to color. They have only to they only have to solve a few problems um, and it, they should be able to do it within like the 15 or 20 minute time that I had set for them. So I'll walk you through my slides. I have so many different slides that I had workshopped. So it kind of depends on what works for you, but I'll have some different models in the links below as well. The thing that's worked out for me the best has been four days of math and each day we have one hour. I would love to have five days, but with the schedule that my school keeps giving us, we just never have time for five days. So I have four days. Last year, I did a lot of trial and error and I tried to have four math centers and they would do a different one each day. But there was always a day that got cut short or we had a rescheduled PE or we had an assembly or a field trip. So there was always a math center that kind of got left out or there were other centers that took longer and they couldn't finish in just one day. So this year I have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I think I'm gonna call Friday, finish it Friday. So if there's a tub that they didn't get to, or if there's something that they didn't finish yet, they can get back with their partner and finish the math tub on Friday. So that way it's all turned in by the end of the day. So in addition to my four days of math centers, I also have four groups. So I have a group that is pretty high intervention um, and they work with a skilled interventionist in math. So she has some things that she does with the students as well, but she can also pull from my math centers and play the games with the kids just because they're not quite independent enough to be playing the games week to week by themselves. So in my center slides, you'll see that there is a tutor table and those are the kiddos that go with her. With my slides, I try to see every group every day as much as possible, but if there's a group that I can't see, it's always my snakes because they are the highest and there's always some extra work that I can give them like word problems or jump into other fluency problems as well. So that's the group that I am not too worried about because I can always challenge them in other ways. But I do want to make sure that I see my crocodiles and my lions and my tigers. I definitely want to see my tigers on days that they're not able to meet with the interventionist if she's gone or absent. So now that I've talked to you about why I do math centers and where they came from and how I built out my slides, I wanted to walk you through each of my math tubs. Math tub one is always solve and cover. 
I got these cards from a variety of places. Some of them are from Happy Hearts and First, and some of them are from Lucky Little Learners. And the reason is because they are differentiated in a different way. Um, some are better for first grade and some are better for second grade, but they are the same in terms of that they are both self-checking. So when the kids come to this math tub, these are the supplies that they'll have. They have their markers and erasers. They each get a marker. They each get an eraser, and then they have two sheets um, that they can play for game boards. They have their mini erasers, so when they win a point, they get to cover up the dot with their mini eraser. And then they also have the solve and cover cards. I just rolled out my centers this week, so that's why I have multiple of these, and they're not laminated. But as I'll show you after this, I have only one set of each set of cards, and then they're all cut and laminated. So when the kids come to the center, they have their whole thing set up, and then they start playing by looking at the card. So this one is a 10 frame. They would count 10, 11, 12, 13, and then they would write 13 in their answer. I would tell them to cover it up and wait for their partner to be ready, and then reveal at the same time. So they will look at it and they will reveal and they are self-checking, so the answer is always on the back. If they put 13, they will get to take a mini eraser and cover it up, and then they will just keep playing like that. It's really nice because it's a really low stakes game. It's really just for practice, so if they get it wrong, you know, they just don't get to put an eraser, but other than that, there's like really no harm in doing it. There's no fights over this game. They're able to talk to their partner. This is a really nice collaborative game as well because if they get different answers, it's nice to hear them talking about why it's wrong or why it's right and then just validate the answer that they got. It's really nice because it's self-checking so they really can't argue about an answer because the right answer is on the back. As you'll see, all of my centers are really different in a variety of ways, but this one is engaging because they get to manipulate a lot of pieces. The only thing that I'm changing out are the cards um, in terms of skill, but then every week they also get a different set of mini erasers. I have so many erasers, um, so I just on Monday pick which erasers they'll have for the week. And then every week they also get a new game board, so I have so many different ones. I really love to change them out for the holidays. And then I have two sets of each one, so all I have to do is take them out and then put them in the sheet protectors, but this has lasted us all year and they really love it. So I store all of my solve and cover cards in these photo keepers from Michaels. They have a really good deal on them in the summer, so I got all of these for about $12 and I have multiple of these. I wanted to organize them by module. We use Eureka Math, so we have modules one through eight, and then some of them fell off, so I need to relabel them, but I have module one, two, three, and then I have a whole other case for modules four through eight. So every week I choose a new card, and then I just change out the cards. I find the new erasers for the week and put them in here, and then I choose the new um, game board that will go in the sleeve protector. So this whole setup is so nice. So after Math Center 1, they have Math Center 2, and Math Center 2 is a crowd favorite. I also love Math Center 2 because it's the one that is the least um, prep for me. So Math Center 2 is always color by code. This is the center that kiddos can do independently. I let them sit with their partner, um, but they're pretty much doing the math independently. If they have a question, they can ask their partner. Um, but this is one that they really get to just solve the problems, answer the questions, and color it in. So these are really fun, much like the solve and cover sheets. I also tried to organize these by module and then also match it with the seasons that we have. So just another way to make, keep math games really engaging. So this is what a lot of them look like. It's not too many problems um, and then they're able to write the answer and then just go ahead and start coloring it in. So these are really nice. These are also really cheap. A lot of them I've gotten for like $1.50 on TPT. Sometimes they're like two or three dollars, but it's just a really easy center for me to prep for the kids and a really easy center for them to do. So these are from Lucky Little Learners. Our first module is addition and subtraction uh, within 20. And then we get into some measurement. We get into place value. I have more of these that I need to print out actually as well. In the fall, we start doing addition and subtraction two digits without regrouping. 
So I have these cute like scarecrow and and squirrel ones. They love these. In the winter, we start teaching two-digit addition with regrouping. So I have some of these. Two-digit subtraction with regrouping. We get into three digits with and without regrouping in like Christmas time and in the winter. So I have all of these. We even have ones for Valentine's Day, three digit with and, with and without regrouping. Once we get to module six, it is intro to multiplication. So I have some arrays, some repeated addition, some columns and rows are right here. And then for my high flyers, I have some actual multiplication ones that they are ready for. Later in the year, we do money and time and graphing. So I found all of these. And again, you get about like six or seven in a bundle. So, uh, and they're all differentiated by like time to the half hour, time to the minute, time to the hour, time to the five minutes. So as we go through each week, we can have do a different one. And sometimes I'll even put two in there. So if they finish one, they can do the next one with their free time. And then some just general like review at the end of the year are like spring and summer ones of skills that we already know how to do. Which brings me to Math Tub 3, which is definitely the most interactive game because they're moving around the classroom and it is Solve the Room. So I used to have a cover for this. It got ripped off last year, but um, inside are just the Solve the Room recording sheets. They get this with a partner. They get a clipboard and have one pencil. They can only have one pencil because they're sharing it with a partner. So they go around the room to different cards and they switch back and forth with their partner talking about math and talking about how to solve them. And all of these cards are so cute. They are also a mix. Some of them are happy hearts and first, and then some of them I also made myself. Some of the concepts that we cover in my curriculum are a little bit different, um, or they have to do it a certain way. So I wanted it to just really match what I'm gonna be teaching. So I just screenshotted the resource, added my own clip art, and added my own problems, and they turned out really, really good. So here's what the cards look like. I have them in these little pouches that I got on Amazon and they fit perfectly uh, for an index card. So the kids love going around and trying to find them. Unfortunately, these are not the best and they do rip, but um, I try to tell the kids not to rip them and I can just kind of tape them or put up new ones. But they really love finding them. I always keep them in the same spots so they aren't having to like look in new places. So much like the solving cover I have my solve the room organized in these photo keepers and they are also organized by module this is one through four and then I have five through eight in another one so every week I all I have to do is change these out and I also tried to organize them by season so when we're doing greater than and less than all of these cards have little leaves on them of different changing colors I have little pumpkin pie ones, which is really cute. In the winter, we have little hot chocolates. So the fourth math tub that I had was just fluency games. They would set a timer and do as many flashcards as they could and, you know, tell their partner when they were right or when they were wrong. But we already have extra math and rocket math, which are two fluency-based technology games. So I figured that was the one that was like easiest for me to get rid of because I was able to use it in other ways. So if you do wanna do four, I would suggest checking out all the blogs below that I have mentioned and then just doing like a fluency game. I also tried last year to do a word problem station, but it was like too hard for some kids and too simple for others. And there was just way too much differentiation and stuff that I had to do for that. So I'm just doing word problems in small groups now. But those are just some ideas that you could do for math tub four if you needed to do four math tubs. This is where we store our math tubs. They have math of one, two, three, and four, but we're not using four this year, so I'll have to find something else to put there. This is where they turn in their math tubs. And then this is also where I decided to keep the clipboards just because they need it for math tub three. It's really easy to just put it on a clipboard that's already right there. So last but not least, I wanted to talk about how I roll out my math centers. The rollout is so important because it's going to be a consistent routine all year long. So as you're rolling out your expectations, your routines, your procedures, this is just another one that I've added in. 
and the students know that we can earn extra minutes for recess, we can earn extra free choice if we are able to do our centers correctly and efficiently. So having incentives like that, really incentivizing it really helps out. So when I introduce my math centers, I always show this anchor chart from Happy Hearts and First, and it talks about being a mathematician. One of the chants that I do all year is mathematicians show their work. I have a lot of really high flyers, almost always, and they know how to do it. So they get the answer, they just put the answer and they don't do any work. And we talk about how as much as the answer is important, the work of how you got that answer is also equally as important. We also talk about how mathematicians solve problems. Mathematicians are talking about math and communicating things about math with partners. They're asking for help if they need it. They are persevering even when it's hard. They're using math tools. So having this chat about mathematicians at the beginning is really nice. And this vocabulary of mathematicians is so interesting for kids because especially in second grade, they've only heard of like, you know, kids do math. Adults do math if they need it for their job. Teachers do math because they teach it to us, but they don't really know about mathematicians. So having this verbiage is really nice. And then this poster stays up in our math center area all year long so they can refer back to it and I can point to it and remind them what they should be doing during their math centers. In addition to that page, I also have these math center expectations from Lucky Little Learners. You use your time wisely. They only get between 15 and 20 minutes for their math tub each day. So they need to use their time wisely, working with their partner and talking about math, not talking about whatever they want. Ask Through Before Me is really nice because they already have a partner for the week, like I talked about earlier. So they ask their math partner. If their partner doesn't know, they have two, three, sometimes even four other people in their group that they can ask. And then if none of those people know, they can ask me. But normally by the time they've asked all those people, someone is able to answer their question. Choose a smart spot. I don't really use this one as much because they only have like one or two options. They're either working with their partner on the carpet, they're working on the coloring, which is color by code, or they're going around the room. So that's obviously not just one spot, but this is good. This is our biggest one, using a quiet voice. My centers are normally pretty quiet because technology, you don't need to talk. Independent work, you're not really talking too much. My table is talking because it's the teacher table, but the math tubs are always the thing that gets so loud. Excited, they're going around the room, they're playing the games. Um, so this is the center that gets the loudest. So using a quiet voice is the most important. I also keep these up on the wall, so I just have to point and they know what I'm talking about. When I'm rolling out the centers, I always teach it in small groups. So this week they did the centers with me. Each day we learned a different one. And then next week they'll actually get to play them with their partner. Um, so I have a whole week of really explaining it. They really know how to play. And then the first week that they're expected to do it independently with a partner, there's like not really any questions because they already know what to do. All right, guys, so that is it for my math center video. I have filmed this so many times. I was talking so much, but I really hope I was able to edit down to something that is really concise and easy to understand. I will tell you, it is quite a lot of prep. I spent a whole summer cutting, laminating, and watching Love Island, so it was a very nice, relaxing summer. And then it was nice because all year long, I had the math center to go and grab. You could do it as you go, but I'm just not that type of person. I needed to just have it done um, before the school year started because, you know, this chaos of back to school. There's not really a lot of time to be cutting and laminating centers every week, at least for me. But do what works for you. I hope this was helpful. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I would love to talk with you about math and about math centers. As a former math hater and a now a reformed math lover, this is a part of my day that actually goes so smoothly. Regardless of what else is going on in the school day, our math time is always really fun and engaging for me and the students. So hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.